It's been an amazing run for the Oakland A's. The past three and a half weeks, they've earned straight A's. They've won an American League record 20 consecutive games. Tonight, they go for number 21. They do so against a Twins team that could easily have won all three last weekend in Oakland. The Twins go for revenge in what could be a postseason preview. The Twins and A's next on Fox Sports Net. Tonight from the Metronome, the team with the smallest magic number in the American League hopes to steal the magic from the Oakland A's and end their American League record 20-game win streak. The Twins, with a lead of 13 games over the White Sox and a magic number of 10, taking on a possible playoff opponent. The Oakland A's with a 20-game winning streak, yet they lead the Angels by only three games. And who better to have in the booth for this awfully interesting ball game than Terry Steinbach, a Minnesota native who starred for the Oakland A's, his home run here in the 1988 All-Star Game, voted him the game's MVP. And, of course, Terry appeared in three straight World Championship or World Series for the Oakland A's, winning a World Championship in 1989. And as these two possible playoff opponents get underway in this key three-game series, a glimpse of the past. Terry has his World Series ring from 1989 on, and I've got this year's edition of the Twins Homer Hanky. So we'll see whether we uh, bring these out again in October. But Terry, a remarkable strength. People have been around in baseball for decades, have never seen anything like the streak the Oakland A's have put together. Yes, they have, Dick. Uh, you know, it's really amazing when you stop and think about it that this team, the Oakland A's team, has the potential to go three weeks without losing a game. I mean, that's three weeks. As a past player, you're happy. You know, you play a three-game series. If you can win two out of three, four-game series, three out of four, you're happy with that. These guys have gone three weeks without losing. And it's unbelievable. The numbers tell the story. The A's certainly have swung the bats well. But look at item number four, a team ERA of 2.65. Well, my goodness, that, that takes us back to the first era of Oakland to glory years in the early 70s with Catfish Hunter and people like that. This team is pitching awfully well. And as impressive as the streak is in and of itself, the way they've extended the streak recently is really remarkable. You're right. The A's have done it with some very key hitting. Uh, here you see Miguel Tejada off of Eddie Guardado, a 3-1, three-run walk-off home run in, in, in the bottom of the ninth inning. Again, Miguel comes up the day after and does the exact same thing with a solid base hit up the middle, as you can see. And, uh, you know, the A's win in, in, in the bottom of the ninth. And uh, when you're having a streak like they're having, everybody has to contribute. Here, Scott Hatterberg has the walk-off home run in win number 20. And the six games between the two teams so far have gone in Oakland's favor. The Twins with a 2-4 and four mark against Oakland, but all six games played in Oakland, and all six, you could make the case, have been decided by one pitch. We expect another well-pitched ball game here tonight. Brad Radke going for the Minnesota Twins against Corey Lytle for Oakland. certainly a playoff atmosphere here at the Metrodome tonight between two teams that may face each other in the first round of the playoffs. In fact, it seems highly probable that they will meet in the first round of the playoffs. Here's the tire plus batting order for the Red Hot Oakland A's. Ray Durham, Scott Hatterberg, and maybe the league's MVP this year, Miguel Tejada. Eric Chavez, Jermaine Dye, David Justice, Mark Ellis, Terrence Long, and Ramon Hernandez. And the Grand Casino scouting report on Brad Radke pitched a good ball game against Oakland. It was the unearned run that Oakland got that really led to the Twins' demise one week ago tonight in Oakland. And the Twins out in the field. Brought to you by Northland Ford. Of course, Doug Minkiewicz is at first. Louis Rivas at second. Left side of the infield has Corey Koski and Christian Guzman. In left field, it's Jock Jones. In center, Torrey Hunter. Michael Kadire getting right field. And A.J. Pierzynski behind the plate. And Brad Radke on the mound. And Terry, ball game that I think you may have caught a couple years ago. Big start for Brad here against the Chicago Cubs. And all the talk was about Kerry Wood this, Kerry Wood that. Brad Radke pitched that ball game, and nobody seemed to even acknowledge the fact that he was the opposing pitcher. Brad Radke... Went into that game with a mission, ended up pitching a shutout against the Chicago Cubs. Somewhat the same challenge, I think, for him tonight. All the talk, 
is about the Oakland A's and not about Brad Radke and the Twins. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I think in, in Brad's, that, that's in Brad's favor tonight. Uh, you know, Brad, being a veteran guy, Brad is focused on the Oakland A's hitters right now. He's not getting caught up in all the hoopla of everything, and he wants to go out there and, and do what he has to do to try to get the A's hitters out. Six games between these two teams have been played, all of them in Oakland. The six games have been decided by a total of ten runs. And in all six games, the winning team has had his, its closer trying to get a save in the ninth inning. So, yeah, Oakland's leading the season series 4-2, to two, but they've been six very close in riveting ball games. Here's Ray Durham to start tonight's ball game. Durham hitting a leadoff home run against Ratke a week ago tonight in Oakland. First pitch bounced to Rivas. A high second hop. You kind of see what Oakland's approach is going to be off Brad. Uh, you know, usually, usually either have to be aggressive on Brad, try to get that first fastball you see, or you got to be very patient and try to wait on the changeup. Either way will work. Durham's case right there. He wants to get that first fastball, put the first pitch he saw, first ball of the game, put it in play. Here's Scott Hatterberg, the first baseman. The 13th home run of his season, the most memorable of his career. A game-ending home run in the bottom of the ninth two nights ago against Kansas City. Outside ball one, for those of you who aren't aware, the A's trying to set an American League record with their 20th straight win jumped out 11 to nothing against Kansas City in the first three innings. Saw the Royals come back and tie it in the top of the ninth. Strike one to even the count. And then Hatterberg incredibly sent a capacity crowd home delirious with another Oakland win with a home run in the bottom of the night. Yeah, I talked to Art Hall before the game, and, and he was so frustrated because they should have never been there. He was telling me about a double play ball, I think, like in the sixth inning. Routine double play ball, that they should have turned, and they tried to be too quick, they tried to be too fine, ended up missing it, and it led to five runs. What a job he's done. If they uh, had an award for the manager of the last four months of every season, they'd name it after Art Howe. This Oakland team has just been incredible in the last four months of the last three years. One and two to Hatterberg. And over the glove of Radke, he may have gotten a piece of it. Hatterberg's aboard with a one-out hit. Yeah, you see right here that, uh, again, Brad went with the change up there. And uh, uh, if you watch Hatterberg right here, he kept his hands back. Even though his weight went forward here, he still kept his hands back enough to, to drive that ball right over Brad's head for a base hit. So Hatterberg is aboard. And now Miguel Tejada. If he needed to convince anybody in a Twins uniform about his MVP status, he did so over the weekend, last weekend in Oakland. Dramatic three-run home run to end the series and allow the A's to sweep the Twins. Well, I think he convinced the... Uh the country there every every sports station you turned on it was kind of like uh, Miguel Tejada highlights home run one game base hit next game I mean I played 14 years Dick never had a walk off home run is you that know? right yeah never had a walk off home run Tejada here you know he has a walk off home run one night next night he goes up there and gets a walk off single key for him and certainly for the Oakland A's a decision by Art Howe to move him into the third spot in the batting order Foul back, and it's 0 and 2. Spot previously held, of course, by Jason Giambi. But Terry is a former Oakland player and somebody who played with Giambi. You have to really admire how this team has responded to the loss of their franchise player. Well, not only that, but it was uh, Giambi went, Ingrenhausen went, and Johnny Damon went. You know, you have three three key guys in in your lineup, and they go, and the team is doing better. You know, than 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 they did when they were there. Two uh, strikes to Tejada, one and two. I think well, I was talking to some of the the, the players about that. Uh, you know, before the game, the A's players, and and I think what happens, you know, you kind of get in that comfort zone when you have three uh, uh, predominant players like the A's had that left. You kind of rely on those guys, and and, and you might uh, be be selling your abilities and and selling your talents, you know, a little short. Once they go, I think as a team, you got to step up your game a little bit, and and people start putting up numbers like Miguel Tejada is doing, like Eric Chavez is doing. One and two to Tejada. 
struck him out. Tejada on a pinch down and in is out number two. There you see Brad Rack, you go into that changeup right here. And the key about this pitch right here is that is that location. Nice down and in pitch that uh, no matter who the hitter is, is, is going to have a tough time handling that pitch. So Tejada is gone for out number two, and that'll bring up Eric Chavez. Yeah, individuals have stepped up. And Chavez has, if there weren't, uh, there the wasn't the talk of Tejada being an MVP candidate. You look at this Oakland, Oakland team and pick out Eric Chavez. Gold glove defense. Check swing and a strike, says Jeff Kellogg. And these kind of numbers, 31 homers, 100 RBIs, and a batting average in the 280s. Another great year for the Oakland third baseman. It's kind of a little script of how a star is born. You got to get rid of the superstars so that stars can get born here. A long way foul. It's kind of a very uh, similar situation here with Oakland as it was in Seattle. Get, right. rid of, get, get rid of Ken Griffey Jr. Get rid of Randy Johnson. And the team actually get rid of Alex Rodriguez. And, and, and the team is as good, if not better, than what they were when those guys were there. Two strikes from Radke to Chavez, trying to end the Oakland first. Another one hit a long way, foul. Two in the upper deck. And the count remains 0-2. Can you pitch so far inside that that's all a hitter can do? That's actually good, good pitching right there. Uh, the crowd here loves those. You know, ooh, ah, you know, hit far, but hit very far foul as well. Those are nice purpose pitches right there. It wouldn't surprise me now to see Brad come back down and away with that changeup on the outside corner. And it's fouled away. That's the part about the game that that I guess that I could say I honestly miss most is, is what I'm seeing AJ doing back there right now what we're talking about right now. You know you, you come inside with pitches and you get the hitter to do exactly what you wanted him to do. Go ahead hit those balls foul. All they are a strike and then to try to get them set up so you do make that good quality pitch down the way you can get that guy to strike out. A shake off by Radke. Again, over the glove of Radke into center field. Hatterberg goes to second and down to third. And Chavez has a base hit. The A's with the runners on the corners now and two away. That's a frustrating part as far as uh, AJ and Brad go right here. He executed the pitch that he wanted to do. He got uh, uh, Chavez out front. He got the ground ball. And this is where, in this particular situation, the turf hurts you. You know, turf, turf hit. Here's Jermaine Dye with two men aboard. Twins have pitched him pretty tough this year, holding him to just two runs batted in over the six games. Facing Radke, who will give another go here tonight for his 100th career win. Pitched well enough to win last Friday, but lost the series opener. And Dye takes inside. Die in his first full year with Oakland. A's picked him up prior to the trading deadline last year as they picked up leadoff man Ray Durham. This year, both very shrewd moves by Billy Bean. Missing inside, 2 0. Die has just had a tough time. Recovering from the broken leg he suffered in the playoffs last year against the Yankees. Hit a foul ball off his front leg. Ended his postseason prematurely. Started this regular season late because of it. 2-0 to Jermaine Dye. And now 3-0 with David Justice on deck. Wow, it's pretty close pitches right there. Uh a lot of times your umpires will favor either inside or outside and you know the pitch prior to that Brad was on the inside corner he called it a ball and there you saw Brad try to hit that outside corner and he called it a ball and you know when you're going against quality hitters like the A's have right here you know at, at some point you got to start getting those pitches. 
And a walk fills the bases for Justice. So, given what has happened to the Oakland A's over the last three and a half weeks, and given what happened last weekend to the Twins in Oakland, this is an awfully key at bat early in the ballgame. Got the base loaded two outs. If Racky gets Justice, everything's fine. But if they get a run-producing hit, then you're got to try to come from behind against a red-hot baseball team. Not only on that, uh, you know, Oakland is very much aware of how the Twins play here at the Dome. And I think they want anything in the world is, is, is to try to score first, try to get on that board first. And this is obviously the very key at bat to try to get that run across. There's a strike on the outside corner. Bradkey, of course, didn't pitch in June or July because of the cold groin injury. One and one. Cook his turn throughout the month of August. In August was two and two with an ERA just over five. Justice of veteran presence hitting six for an Oakland team that once again this year is recovered from a slow start. One and one to Justice. Popped up near the mound. Koski calls for it. Hitting over. The A's leave three aboard in the first inning. Don't score against Brad Radke. Those weren't sure, and their fans weren't sure whether there would be another game. Now there's more baseball, and they'll look ahead to the postseason. Hence the Homer Hankies. Here's the Tires Plus batting order for the Twins. Jock Jones leading off. He'll be followed by Christian Guzman, Corey Koski, David Ortiz, Torrey Hunter, Doug Minkiewicz, Michael Kanayer, A.J. Pierzynski, and Luis Rivas. And the Grand Casino scouting report on Corey Lytle hasn't lost since July 30th. Finally gave up an earned run after 43 innings without allowing an earned run. Twins got a run against him in the sixth inning last Saturday. Former property of the Minnesota Twins facing Jock Jones. Off speed pitch for ball one. Guess we have to note here too that he was American League uh, pitcher of the month. Mm -hmm. Going 5 0. 1 0 to Jones, who started the series last weekend, last Friday, with a home run to center, taking ball two. Hasn't seen a fastball yet in the at bat. Well, I was talking to some of the Twins players today and uh, they want to try to be a little bit more selective here. Uh, a level ball has quite a bit of movement. Deep to left center field toward the gap. Off the fence. Jones with a leadoff double. He jumped all over a 2-0 pitch and rifled it to the gap. Here's something that Jock has done very well all year, not getting too far out in front of that ball, hitting the ball where it's pitched, driving that ball just short of a home run, as you can see it bounced off the warning track right there, just short of a home run for, for a leadoff double. While the Twins were in all three games in Oakland, they were stung with the outcome of all three games. And there's a little extra incentive into this Three game series this weekend because of what happened last weekend. Here's Guzman. Pick off to second. Jones gets back. Like we're talking about before uh, Jock hit that double. I know the Twins uh, batters here are going to try to be a little bit more selective. Lytle has quite a bit of movement, you know, on his ball, sinkers, sliders, and they felt that, uh, you know, they got themselves out quite a bit out in Oakland. So they're going to try to be a little bit more selective, try to get pitches that they can handle as Jock did in his last at bat. point that should be made that in the, the incredible month of August that Corey Lytle had, he did not have to face one team twice. And now the challenge is, of course, coming back and facing the same team on a mission 
in back to back starts. Absolutely. Uh, you know, also we got to throw in the modern world of technology here. You know, they're watching his his games pitch. They're they're taping all those games, not just against how not just how he, he pitched against Minnesota, but how he's pitched. And they study that, you know, and they'll find out this particular pitch is going to sink. This particular pitch is going to slide tendencies. I, you know, guy in RBI situation. What does he throw? And hitters learn from that. One strike to Guzman. Another pick off to second, and again Jones is back. Catcher involved in that call, or is that strictly between the pitcher and the shortstop? There's a couple ways to go. You're absolutely right. A lot of times they'll have the catcher be involved with that, where sometimes the catcher will just drop his glove, so it's kind of a timing play. If you have very agile shortstop second basemen like Open does, they'll work out uh, their own plays with, with, with the pitcher. Open glove, close, close glove kind of thing. And what they do is they, they, they try to watch them prior to the, the, the time when they pick them off. Fastball down the middle, 0-2. And for what they do is if uh, if Miguel thinks that Jock is getting too too big a lead, sometimes they'll even give a sign to the pitcher, you know, the the, the, the pitch before, and say, okay, next pitch, let you know, let let's try to pick him off. Let's see what Guzman can do here. Of course, Jones got his double on a 2-0 pitch. Now Guzman standing in, trying to advance him with the count 0-2. Dirt, nice block by Hernandez. One and two. Lytle, as Terry mentioned, American League Pitcher of the Month in August, an ERA of 0 0.19. And as recently as July, any team could have picked him up for a song. He was on the trade market, was struggling. Hayes didn't find much interest in picking him up, and boy, are they glad they didn't make that trade. One and two to Guzman. Inside. Two and two. Well, it's good to see here that home plate umpire, Eric Cooper, you know, so far here in the bottom of the first inning, is staying consistent, you know, with the strike zone. You saw Brad Radke in the top of the first not get those pitches, and here you're, see here you're seeing uh, uh, Corey Lytle not, not getting those pitches either. Couple shakeoffs by Lytle. What's that mean? Could that be uh, uh, intentional on the pitcher's part, just trying to make the hitter think a little bit? I don't think so. I, I mean, at, at times it can be. I think in this per particular situation it wasn't. I think Lytle has a definite idea of what he wants to throw, and Ramon Hernandez didn't get to it in time, and so obviously it causes a little bit of a delay. Again, trying to steal that inside corner with a moving fastball, and it's a full count. See a lot of posturing going on here in that first inning with pitcher, catcher, umpire. You know, pitchers are trying to feel out Eric Cooper. What, how much is he going to give me? What is he going to give me here tonight? And the only way to do it is is to actually throw those pitches and then see how far in is he going to go, how far out is he going to go. It was 0 and 2. Now it's 3 and 2. And he gets him on a pitch up and away, one down. Lytle not happy even though he struck out Guzman. And here are the A's out of the field. Scott Hanneberg on the Northwood Ford defense. Mark Ellis, Eric Chavez, and Miguel Tejada. David Justice, Terrence Long in center. Jermaine Dyan right, and Ramon Hernandez behind the plate. Lytle on the mound facing Corey Koski trying to drive home the game's first run. The right center field toward the gap. Die chasing it and it falls off the wall. Jones scores. Koski to second. The Twins lead one to nothing. A double to left center and a double to right center. Borikoski not waiting very long here, being very aggressive. First pitch he sees, gets that sinking fastball that we talked about earlier in the game, and drives that ball to right center, just a little bit short of the home run. I think if he'd have been a little bit left of the bag, he would have made it over. RBI number 60 for Koski, and now David Ortiz to the plate.
Ortiz with a good average. Just a couple of runs batted in, though, against the A's. Chopper to the left side. Shot out. Atterberg. Koski moving up a base. Two down. And that'll bring up Torrey Hunter. Ortiz was the hitter who broke up Lattle's scoreless inning streak last Saturday in Oakland with a sixth inning double. And now Torrey Hunter. Hunter against Lytle, one for six. Trying to get Koski in from third with two away. On the inside edge, strike one. I think you're going to see Torrey here, too, trying to be a little bit a little bit more selective. Uh, you, know, you look at Torrey's progress over the last two, three years, he's gone from being you know, very much of a free swinger to starting to tame that down a little bit more. And I think when, when he gets to where he's swinging at more strikes, you're really going to see Torrey explode offensively. A double hit. Two strikes. Is that a good omen or a bad omen there, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Look at what he's done at the Metrodome. Four home runs, 16 on the road, but a 344 average here at home. And if these two teams do, in fact, meet in the playoffs, one objective in this series is to establish home field advantage for the Twins against Oakland. Two strikes to Hunter. One and two. That's a good take by Torrey Hunter right there. That was. That's one of those pitches out in open that that uh, Torrey was swinging at. And it's like you talk about. You face that same pitcher. You know, just six days later. You know, six, six days apart. You, you you remember how he pitched you. And right there, you see Torrey laying off that pitch. One and two to Hunter. Bouncer to Shark. Tejada throws it. Put together a couple of first inning doubles and score first against Corey Lytle. That gentleman, we're told, celebrating his 90th birthday here at the Metrodome tonight. Hey, oh, no, wait there a we second. go. There huh? we go. That's what we're talking about. He is officially, look at that, officially circle. Bert's got nothing on me. <laughs> well, now, since Bert's gone, I would hope that I've We'll have the opportunity tonight a few times to circle fans. Well, strike one on the outside corner to Mark Ellis. I don't know what your policy that you and uh, Bert got worked out up here. You know, generally he's pretty understanding about me uh, using his telestrator. Grounder to short. Guzman gobbles it up. Ellis retired one away. Tori Hunter talked before the game about the importance of playing well here at home against Oakley. You know, it's going to be a different ball game uh, than when we were in Oakland. I mean, they had all the momentum going uh, for them, and, and uh, they had the fans behind them, and, and uh, now we have the fans behind us, and we got the momentum on our side. One down, here's Terrence Long. And there's strike one. Long hitting eighth in the Oakland lineup. Twins have pitched him pretty well. Up and in, and it's one and one. Really have to respect what these two organizations have done, and Oakland's done it longer than the Twins. They've been to the playoffs the last two years, appear like they're going to make it three straight years with one of the lower payrolls in baseball. And of course, the Twins trying to get to postseason play for the first time since 1991. And both teams have done it with pitching. Twins, despite all the injuries to the rotation, have gotten pretty good starting pitching, and the A's have just dominated baseball over the last couple months with their great pitching. Cap foul, two and two. Now it's your chance to get in the game. Go to FoxSports.com, enter in keyword email the booth. Let us know what your thoughts on the Twins are. 
And if you like your question or comment, we'll put it on the air. So email the booth at foxsports.com. I think the other similarity you have there too, Dick, you know, that the uh, two clubs have is they seem to be doing stuff from within, you know. To left field, playable for Jock Jones. In fact, he hardly has to move two away. You don't see neither of these two ball clubs really tapping into that free agent market aggressively. You know, they might pick up a guy here, pick up a guy there, but throughout the most part, they're taking guys from within, guys that they've drafted, guys that they've uh, developed, guys that they've kind of groomed for, for the roles that they're in and, and, and are being successful doing it. Here's Ramon Hernandez. Of the opponents the Twins have played this year, the games against Oakland have consistently been the closest and most interesting games. That's why if they meet in the playoffs, it should be a great series. Right now, you'd have to think Oakland would have the home field advantage. But the Twins have played six very close ball games and could have won all six in Oakland. And then you've got the home field advantage that's been established here in the postseason. I know the, the country will probably watch whoever the Yankees would be playing, but boy, the Oakland Minnesota series would be a great one. Yes, it would. Dick. The other thing you got to watch out for a little bit is, you know, look at Seattle last year. A lot of attention drawn to that to that great season that they had. You watch them go into postseason and didn't do very well at all. First yeah. round and they're out. So, you know, this is like, well, one third of the puzzle, that, you know, if, if you want to call it that. You got to make the playoffs first. Okay. Once you do that, you put that aside, you concentrate on, on, on who you're playing right now and looking at the second phase of trying to get to that World Series. Two strikes to Ramon Hernandez. Ground ball right side, Rivas. Tumenkiewicz and Radke has a one, two, three, second inning. After an inning and a half, it's one nothing Twins. Oh, come on. There we go. We got another one. Consider yourself oh, officially man. circled. Even though it wasn't by uh, by Bird, it was by Terry, but you're you're still circled. Terry Steinbach sitting in for Bert. Bert will be back here on Monday. Here's Doug Minkiewicz to face Corey Lytle. Minkiewicz, one of the few Twins hitters who's done well against Lytle. Three hits and six at bats. Talked to Doug before the game a little bit. He's still been saying he's been still bothered by that uh, that wrist injury a little bit or that that nagging type of ailment that, that that he has. And a strike, one and one. Twins trying to end the longest streak in Major League history in 67 years. Now, are we talking about that before the game that the current streak that's in play right now 20 games 20 games no the uh, the record right 26 26 there's actually a tie mm -hmm. sandwiched in, in in the middle of that now my feeling on that is <laughs> that's not a winning streak. That's not a winning streak. That, that, no, but but apparently I guess the powers that be, you know, must must be considering that, you know, a streak, uh, you know, a winning streak. An undefeated streak, certainly one and two to Minkiewicz and now two and two. The 1935 Cubs won 21 games in a row. Then you have to go back to 1916. The New York Giants played 26 games without losing, but there was a tie in the middle of that streak, presumably because of darkness. They didn't have lights on the field. Minkiewicz swings and misses. Hernandez has a throw to make, and he makes it one away. College football Saturday presented by Kiyosara returns to Fox Sports Net tomorrow with a triple header. First, the Fresno State Bulldogs take on the 13th-ranked Oregon Ducks. Then San Diego State visits the 17th-ranked Colorado Buffaloes. In the nightcap, the 19th-ranked Colorado State Rams battle the UCLA Bruins. Coverage begins tomorrow with the College Football Saturday kickoff show at 10.30 Central, right here on Fox Sports Net. Here's Michael Kadire hit home run number three in Oakland last Sunday afternoon. A mammoth blast to left center field, and we all thought it was one of the biggest home runs of the season for the Twins. But then Tejada hit his game winner in the bottom of the inning, and Oakland won anyway. 
Kadire's home run in Oakland was the third of three solo home runs that brought the Twins back from a two run deficit to a one run lead. Two strikes to Kadire. And now three strikes. And two away in the second inning. Here you see what here you see what Lytle does so well. Uh, you know, two fastballs down the middle. He gets ahead in the count. Throws that uh, fork ball down and away. Very tough for for, for pitchers to lay off. Of. I mean, for batters to lay off. Of. Excuse me. Two down, and now AJ Pierzynski. You have to ask me on that. Uh, you know, I did read a little bit about. Uh, you know Michael Kadire's adventures. You know with the with the whole strike and the settlement and Rossby moves and all that stuff. And I read a little bit about what he said. How was he? You know you saw it firsthand. How was he in person? You know when when the strike was settled and there he is and he's at Oakland and, he, and he's you know he's before the September one. Pretty thrilled to be back on the Twins clubhouse and uh, be on the uh, playoff roster. Pierzynski bounces to Hatterberg. One two three. The Twins lead one to nothing after two. One nothing twins welcome back to the Metrodome. I'm Clay Manthick alongside our baseball insider Jim Suhan from the Star Tribune. There's a little asterisk that goes along with what Dick Bramer alluded to last half inning the New York Giants in 1916. They have the longest consecutive winning streak but as I mentioned there's a little asterisk. That's right the, the 1916 Giants won 12 tied one then won, won six, 14 in a row and as Art House said this isn't hockey ties shouldn't count. Well, the A's going for 21 wins in a row here tonight. A reminder, immediately following the game tonight, another Grand Casino Twins postgame show. Jim will join me here on Fox Sports Net. That's right after the game. Let's go back upstairs to Dick and Terry. All right. Thanks, guys. Brad Ratke to face Ray Durham starting the Oakland third inning. Durham has done exactly what the A's intended him to do after acquiring him from Chicago. He's provided a little spark on the top of the lineup, albeit as a designated hitter. He was the second baseman for the White Sox, but he uh, he's really jump started this offense during this streak. I agree. I think uh, you know what Oakland did that they, they needed somebody like that switch hitter up there. Good speed has a good eye on the ball can go up there and get on base and, and, and let you know the Tejada Chavez's and dies of, of, of Oakland drive drive him in. Two quick strikes to Durham. His home run against Radke, a leadoff home run last Friday, part of a four hit game for Durham in the series opener. Nearly hit for the cycle, one and two. Take a look at the Dodge Power performers. The LA Lakers in the early 70s won 33 games. The Giants, with that asterisk by it, 26 in a row. And in the National Hockey League, the Penguins. Going 17 straight. And now two and two. What's been lost in all of this, as incredible as the streak is, while the A's might have pulled away from Seattle a little bit, they cannot shake the Anaheim Angels. During the last week of the streak, while Oakland has won 20 straight, Anaheim's won seven straight. So while they've extended their winning streak from 13 to 20, they haven't gained any ground on Anaheim. To the bag, one away. That's why, as great as this streak is, this is a key series for Oakland because they're still in for a fantastic fight for a playoff spot. After this series, the A's have eight games in the next week and a half against Anaheim. Yeah, and they're we're, we're, they're well aware of that. Uh, you know, again, the players and, and and the coaching staff. Yeah, the streak is great. Yeah, it's brought a lot of national attention to the club. But they know. Uh, they, uh, uh, talking art before the game, it was you know what? This is going to come down to a 24-game season. These next 24 games after they leave Minnesota are going to be the most important games that the A's are going to play this whole year. That's the way a division championship should be decided, with the best teams facing. Uh, each other and that will be the case in the final three weeks just off the corner one and one Oakland with the best record in the American League they've got a slightly better record than the Yankees and not quite as good a record as the Atlanta Braves here's a drive to right center field Hunter chasing it and off the fence 
played in center by Kadair and holding up at second is Hatterberg. A ball hooking apparently away from Torrey Hunter and Hatterberg has his second hit. You see Brad Radke here in the third inning getting, you know, one of his pitches up here a little bit. See that it was belt high over the middle of the plate. Hatterberg drives it to the deepest part of the park. And again, Torrey Hunter just missing that ball. Uh, I think we caught a break there. Uh, you know, I thought Hatterberg could have probably had a triple right there uh, when he was rounding second or getting close to second. He was already looking. And, and when the ball's in front of you or, or to, to the right of you, he's got to make that decision on his own. All those years of catching can take a little life out of your legs, can it? <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Here's Tejada. Tejada with a strikeout, his first time up. Tying run at second with one away. Up and away, ball one. But him marveling, rightfully so, the year Alex Rodriguez is having. But Tejada would get my MVP vote. I don't have one over Rodriguez simply because of what he's meant, the value he has had for his team. I couldn't agree with you more. I think there's something to be said about those teams that are in contention and how the guys are doing. A Rod goes out there day in and day out. Not that again, not that he's not a, a, a all-star player or you know one of you know very very good good shortstop, but you know, when there's nothing riding on that game, when, when there's no playoff contention uh, uh, involved, you can tend to be more, more relaxed and, and do things you might not be doing without the pressure. One and one to Tejada. Swing and a foul, one and two. I don't know that the American League has ever seen the quality of shortstop play that they are seeing in this current era with Rodriguez, Tejada, Garcia, Parra, Jeter not on the list. Vizquel, Guzman, an all-star shortstop last year. Racky trying to take care of Tejada. With one away and the tying run at second. tie the game. Hatterberg headed back to second base. So the single up the middle will only advance him to third. A sharp single to center for Tejada. First and third with one away here in the third. We see Miguel Tejada hitting the slider right there. Staying back, not chasing it, going after the ball. And again, we catch another break with, uh, with Scott Hatterberg. For our long, young viewers out there, here it's very important. You, you see a situation where the A's could have had this game tied with just average base running. Uh, Hatterberg, again, not being the fastest guy out there, but just paying attention to, to, to what the game gives you. He could have been on third, and with that hit right there, would have scored. Here's Chavez with first and third and one away. Chavez singled up the middle, a ground ball base hit his last time up. Strike one on the outside corner. Racky hoping to get a double play behind him. Hayes with four hits. Radke's issued one walk. One and one. Tahada, pretty good speed at first. Hatterberg at third. Popped up wide of third. Koski for a look, but it's out of play. One and two. The A's trying to extend their winning streak on the road, and you'd think that would be a tough task, and it will be here, but half their winning streak, more than half, has been built on the road. They had a 10 and 0 road trip before they opened up that series a week ago. At home against the Twins. 
So winning on the road. Not uh, a novelty for this Oakland team. Big spot here with the tying run at third and one away. One and two to Eric Chavez. Foul tip. He just got a piece of it. Good hitters seem to do that. They get fooled, but they somehow manage to keep the at bat alive. Just got a piece of that ball. Everything was done right with AJ and Brad. Brad throwing the change of keeping it down, and uh, uh, Chavez was fooled on it. Actually pulled off the ball a little bit right there. But as you mentioned, Dick, just got a piece of that ball. Waiting, waiting for Brad to make a mistake. Another one-two. Tejada takes off deep to right field. This one might stay fair. And it's foul. Just missed the screen. Oh, was that ever close? He hit two of them into the upper deck foul in his first at bat. That one just missed the foul screen. See that little cut fastball that Brad's been throwing, and he didn't get that ball in enough. Well, just enough, I guess he got it in for uh, uh, Chavez not to be able to keep that ball oh. fair. Body English and a joyous bounce on the mound. So Chavez, who just got a piece of it to keep the at bat alive, just missed a three run home run. And he'll get another one two from Radke. Foul the other way. It's kind of nice to see here. Here we're in the third inning, top of the third inning, and you can tell the intensity that the players have. You have Brad trying to push that ball foul. You have uh, uh, Chavez trying to trying to wish that ball fair. Uh, you know, here we are, third inning, and, and and the players are into it that much already, which is which is really good to see and just indicative of the atmosphere that we have at the ballpark tonight. And it should condition them for October baseball. Whatever the intensity is here tonight, magnify it times ten. And you've got playoff baseball. Throw to first. Out of chase back to the bag. Racky pitched out of a big jam in the first inning, leaving the bases full. Another one, two to Chavez. New Era presents the final Twins Pro Shop autograph session tomorrow morning. Bobby Kelty will be appearing in Roseville, and David Ortiz will be signing in Apple Valley. Autograph sessions are from 11 to 12.30. You can also purchase the new Twins Homer Hanky presented by the Star Tribune beginning tomorrow at the Pro Shops. Call the charge lines for details. You talk about setting up a hitter like we did earlier. Brad goes in with that little cut fastball. The pitch, two two pitches before Chavez hits it way foul. I mean, uh, far enough, but just foul. Comes back with the changeup, and as you can see on his at bat, was completely fooled. He pulled off that ball, and you know, resulted in the strikeout. Die drew a four-pitch walk against Radke to fill the bases back in the first. And Radke missed a couple of times in the die at bat in the first inning. Here he gets the corner for strike one. So we talked about it here. I, I, you know, you see the pitches, both both pitches working the corners, and again. A lot of times umpires takes takes them a little bit to, to, to get into the flow of the game to get into the rhythm of the game and and those pitches are the pitch right there that he called that Eric Cooper called for strike in the first inning I think he would have called those for a ball one and one it's one of the great joys in watching postseason baseball you watch however many games you watch over the course of the season then come October you can count on one hand it seems the number of pitches thrown down the middle of the plate everybody works to the corners of the plate. Not only that, but it also seems the the importance of every pitch, the importance of every at bat, the importance of every play. Everything is magnified tenfold. Die backs out of the box. Hatterberg with a one-out double. He's at third, representing the tying run. One on one to Jermaine Die. Strike two on the inside corner. And on both of those, Die is backing away from the plate. 
Right there you see Brad throwing that little uh, two, two seam fastball that's going to run into the right handers. But I think most importantly is that uh, uh, AJ didn't give up on that pitch and Brad hasn't given up on that pitch and they're giving Eric Cooper a chance to call that pitch for a strike. Tied it again but missed two and two. Second inning out of three where Radke's had to try to wriggle out of a jam. He succeeded in the first, trying to get it done again here in the third. Bouncer to third. Koski finds the ball up against his chest, throws to Minkiewicz, hitting over. Great job again by Brad Radke, keeping the A's off the board. Big ball game tonight. The A's don't play in October. Well, they think they will be playing in October. They have the last two years. Here's Corey Lytle to Luis Rivas taking ball one just off the corner. Rivas not playing or not hitting well against the A's. Taking low 2-0. I think sometimes you see a lot, Dick. It, it, it just uh, makes a huge difference about that home and away. You know, you go on a road trip and, and you might struggle hitting, and and sometimes uh, you don't have uh, the time and and and, and facilities sometimes to get some extra work. You know, hitting when a player comes home, he gets back into that comfort zone. You know, a place that he's played before, a batting cage that that he's comfortable with, and and you know, he's familiar with with his surroundings. A lot of times, you know, you get a guy out of a little bit of a slump. Three and one to Rivas. Lytle missed a couple of starts earlier this year with a sore shoulder. He had injury problems as a twin. Never really pitched much in the low levels of the minor leagues for the twins. Down the line. Foul. Terry Ryan told me the story in Oakland that twins actually signed Corey Lytle at a bowling alley out in California. And they just had a tough time watching him pitch. He just he was he had one injury after another, and that was true after he left the Twins organization. But with time and with health, he's evolved into a pretty good pitcher. He did not uh, fare well in the Tampa Bay organization and has found a home in Oakland. This one pulled foul. Three and two. That's where that maturity comes in, you know. So some some kids, some players, it, it, it just it takes a while, you know, for for guys to to find out which scenario of coaching of, of fields of what is going to work for him. You know, Johnny Damon's another example. A little bit, uh, you know, didn't do very well with Oakland last year, and is doing very well with Boston this year. Three two to Rivas. Base hit. That might run the gap. Long's got a scamper after it. That's what we were talking about. Luis feeling comfortable at home. Gets a sinker that uh, Lytle left up and uh, and drove it to the gap. And for, for the young kids, again, right out of the chute, Luis is running hard. And, and as soon as that ball got by Terrence Long in center field, he knew he was going for three the whole way. Twins got a leadoff double from Jones to score in the first. Now a leadoff triple. And Jones. Looking as if he wanted to bunt Rivas in, nearly got hit by the pitch. Jones on a 2 0 pitch, cracked a double to left center field and scored on the Koski double to right center field. And a little dribble. Lila throws past the helmet of Jones, one away. It's back and better than ever. The undisputed champion of pregame shows returns as J.B., Terry, and Howie kick off another NFL season. 
Joining them in week one will be their old friend Jimmy Johnson. He's won titles in both college and the pros. Now Jimmy will break down what Steve Spurrier has to do to win in Washington. Then stick around for an NFL on Fox doubleheader as the Vikings take on the Bears and the Rams battle the Broncos. Vikings will take on the Bears in Champaign, Illinois, while they are refurbishing Soldier Field. Here's Guzman hitting with the infield in. And Lytle having a little chat with Tejada. Guzman struck out on a 3-2 pitch back in the first inning. Breaking ball left up high. Lytle gave up a run to the Twins in the sixth inning in Oakland last Saturday, ending a streak of 43 innings without a score, an earned run. Twins have one here in the first, looking for another one in the third, and it's 2-0 to Guzman. I think this is a situation here where the Twins hitters really got to work extra hard on making sure they get pitches they can handle in this situation. You got a guy in third, you're looking for something up in the zone, a ball that you can drive out to the outfield so that you can score uh, score Rivas. Chopper, Ellis Fields has a play at home. He'll throw to first, and Rivas scores. It's two to nothing. Guzman for the chopper to drive in Rivas for Guzman his 51st run batted in. Or when you got speed like uh, Guzzi does, you can beat those balls into the carpet and, <laughs> and drive the guy in too. Uh, great situation for the Twins right there. You know, Rivas on third with great speed, Guzman at the plate with great speed, and uh, really if uh, Guzzi puts the ball in play, uh, there's a good chance of Rivas scoring. And, and that's really what you want right there. Just do do the fundamentals right. Get that guy in from third with less than two, and the Twins executed that very well right there. Koski again going after the first pitch. Fouling it for strike one in the first inning. He hit the first pitch off the fence in right field for an RBI double. One and one. So if nothing else, at least Corey Lytle has proven human in his last two outings against the Twins. They have already scored more runs against him in September than he allowed earned or unearned in all of August. Two and one to Koski. And now two and two. In his first four starts in the month of August. Lattle didn't give up any runs at all. He gave up an unearned run on August 26 and the earned run to the Twins on the 31st. And Koski gets his second hit. A two out single to right. What we like to see here, Corey Koski staying very aggressive at the plate. Had a nice double his first at bat. That uh, pitch right there. Lytle trying to come in on Corey. Corey pulled those hands in very nicely and drove the ball out to the right center gap. Here's David Ortiz. A ground ball to Chavez his first time up. Off speed pitch just off the corner. Ball one. So far after three innings Dick it seems like the, uh, the Twins hitters are doing what what they want to do you know they're they're being more selective up there they're trying to get good good pitches to hit and not chasing as much of Lytle stuff uh, you know, down in the zone as they had in the past. 
lead off extra base hits help twins got a lead off double in the first and the lead off triple here in the third hits are even at four apiece. One and zero from Lytle to Ortiz. And now two and zero. Talk about that change of scenery thing, you know, in Lytle's case, being being with Minnesota. You wonder how many players, you know, have turned out to have successful successful major league careers. Did what Corey Lytle did. You know, started with one organization, didn't pan out. Went to another organization, didn't pan out, and all of a sudden, as you mentioned, found a nice home in Oakland. The right center field died of a gap, makes the catch. Twins get the leadoff triple by Rivas. Score the second run. It's two to nothing. You're watching Twins baseball on Fox Sports Net. Pull down the magic number tonight. Get it down into single digits. It's 10 as we start play tonight. Clay Matvick, Terry Steinbach filling in for Burt Blylevin and Dick Bramer at the Dome. And here's the question. I don't believe I've ever asked any of the people I've ever worked with up here, and I've worked with quite a few over the years, how many geese have you shot already? <laughs> well, opener, we went out. We had uh, my brother and his son and, and, and myself and my son, and uh, we ended up with uh, uh, three geese on the, on the opener. Okay. Had a had a little user error screw up. Uh, I'll, I'll admit it. I made my mistake. I, I situated my decoys in the wrong position, and the geese did exactly what they were supposed to. And I was frustrated as to why they didn't come in. And upon reading instructions of how these decoys sh should be placed, I realized I did it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Justice with a flare to left center. Guzma out there. One away. Here's our Amplac trivia question, and it's not goose hunting related, I don't think, or duck hunting related. Sorry about our apologies to the uh, Aflac duck to even mention waterfowl hunting, but who's the last shortstop in the majors to win an MVP award? And we will answer that question in the next half inning. Mark Ellis, the hitter. Ellis with a bouncer to short his first time up. And a strike to Ellis. Frank Menachino started the year as the second baseman. He's ran another prospect out there for a while. Had Ellis there, then acquired Ray Durham. They like the consistency that Ellis has brought to the A's this year. He hasn't had the red hot month and a cold month offensively. He's just kind of gone about his business and had a pretty nice year. Heard there was a little controversy when Durham came over. Uh, I think he came over expecting to be the everyday second baseman. And uh, you know when he didn't uh, him and Art Howe had had some talks or had had some discussions and you know, as you mentioned Rays fit into his role so far you know at least uh, the outward signs it appears that he's, he's he fit into his role role very well. One and two to Ellis. Strike three. Pierzynski has to make it. Two away. You got to be careful, don't you? When, when things are going well, as they obviously are for the Oakland A's, yet they went out and got Ray Durham. You know, and I know that's one thing that Terry Ryan was concerned about it. As the Twins wrapped up the month of July, things were going so well. What would you be able to add at the risk of disrupting what you built all season long? Exactly right. Uh, it, you know, you, you, you got to be careful about getting caught up in making a move just to make a move. You know, and is the move going to help you, or hopefully, and sometimes is the move going to hurt you? And uh, it, it, it's 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 tough. And uh, you want to make sure that you know you make the move for the right reason. The positive, you know, you make a move. It shows your club that the the front office is in this with you. You know that you're 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 taking this seriously. And 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 you know you're trying to trying to pick your ball club up. You know by by picking someone up. Oakland's example. We picked up Ricky Henderson. You right. know, well, God, you see that move and you're like, wow. You know, the front office is uh, 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 really convinced or really trying to to win this division. 2-0 to Terrence Long. Fly ball, deep center. Hunter going back. Under it now for the catch. Brad Radke with a 1-2-3 fourth and a 2-0 lead.
Twins trying to end the longest American League streak ever at 20 games tonight. And the Twins have a two to nothing lead. Now wait just a second. That took, <laughs> that took a lot of time. We are these friends rather look she's on the cell phone underneath there there we go you oh. can see yourself circled I like it I don't know how word got out yeah I mean I only call 200 people there really <laughs> I mean that's all I call <laughs> Tory Hunter to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning it'll be Hunter Minkiewicz and Kadire Tory bounced to short his first time up And now 2 and 0. Yeah, you're right. The Twins are going about their at bats much more patiently than they did last Saturday against Lytle. And they found themselves in some hitting counts like this 2 0 count to Hunter. Pounded foul 2 and 1. I never liked doing what, what, what the Twins had to do right now, playing the same team, you know, back to back. Uh, more for defensive reasons because behind the plate you know you had a, a, a series of, of what your game plan was you know for like three days out in Oakland and you did that and hopefully you were successful at it well when you turn around and Oakland's back you know at the dome now six days later as a catcher you, you start thinking well you know do I have to change what worked or are, are, are the hitters going to be looking for what we did out there and and, and sometimes it gets you know very confusing you know, behind the plate trying to figure out which which way should I go, which direction should I try to get this hitter out. We've had this discussion with Bird up here, you know, whether it's a, the advantage to the hitter or the pitcher to face each other a half dozen days apart, or in this case, you know, from Saturday to Friday, and consensus he had is it was a big advantage for the hitter, just to get a better, you know, fresh memory of what a pitcher has, one away. Mountain Dew Bobblehead Series wraps up tomorrow with the Guzzi. First 10,000 fans will receive a Mountain Dew Christian Guzman doll. You can call 833 Twins and be part of the great weekend of baseball against the A's. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that one too. Uh, you know, definitely an advantage to the hitter because you know you're as, as evident with with the Twins hitters right now. You know they're having much better at bat. Sure, Corey Lytle's still getting his share of guys out, but. I think if you look at the overall quality of the at bats that we've had after three innings, they're a lot better than they were in Oakland. One down, here's Doug McCabe. And he checks his swing and takes ball one. We we're talking in the last inning about acquiring players prior to the trading deadline, and the A's have done a wonderful job picking up last year Jermaine Dye, Ricardo Rincon this year, Ray Durham this year. Maybe one of the better examples of how disruptive it could be it was a trade the twins made late in the 1984 season they had a little shortstop who played there most of the year by the name of Houston Jimenez wasn't a great offensive player but very steady in the field and the twins had worked their way into first place with Houston Jimenez at their shortstop uh, as their shortstop two and one then late in the 84 season the twins acquired veteran Chris Spire. Chris was a great shortstop in his prime but he was at the tail end of his career and he came to the twins with an injured knee and just the whole process seemed to contribute to a tough final month for the twins backhanded by Tejada he beats Minkiewicz by a step two away our Aflac trivia question involves Tejada in a way as a candidate for the league's MVP who was the last shortstop in the majors to win a most valuable player award Guesses. Yes, my guess would be Cal Ripken. I'm going to go with oh, Barry Larkin in 1995. I was going to say Alex Rodriguez. No, he didn't win he that. Didn't win. Year he won a batting uh, championship in Seattle, but not the MVP. Outside to Kadire. Michael struck out swinging his first time up. One and zero from Lytle to Kadire. To center field, Jermaine Die over, excuse me, Terrence Long over for the catch. And like Brad Ratchie, Corey Lytle has a one, two, three, four. If you'd like to do the honors and go ahead and circle those Twins fans. May I thank you? <laughs> from Mankato, right in my backyard. Not Consider too far from New There we are. Twins leading two to nothing. Dick Bramer 
along with Terry Steinbach filling in for Burt Blylevin, joined uh, during this half inning by Minneapolis Mayor R.T. Ryback, who is wearing his Twins jersey. And you're out here to watch the Twins beat uh, the Oakland A's and end their winning streak. I am, and I'm here with my Little League team from uh, the Lyndhurst Lakers. They're right up in Section 223, okay. right above me. And uh, and they are uh, they're cheering like everybody now. It feels like the playoffs in here tonight, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. Ramon Hernandez on the first pitch is retired. Twins got a big reprieve a week ago, uh, Mayor, as you know, with the not only the, the promise that this season would be completed, but contraction's been put off for four years. So now the big challenge. There's, there's a little there they are. right there. Okay. Give those guys a Let's circle. get them all. I hope I can fit them all in there. <laughs> That's my son right there. We'll give him a special That's, circle. There, there you go. go. <laughs> One good. They'll go home happy tonight. They're a good team. They didn't win this year, uh, but uh, but they will next year. It's, it was a building season, right? <laughs> Ray Durham, the hitter. The big challenge for the organization, of course, is to get a stadium and, and take the Twins off the contraction list uh, forever. Uh, talk a little bit about Minneapolis's efforts, where that effort is right now, and how optimistic you are that Everybody will roll up their sleeves again in the next legislative session and get it done. Well, we put a lot of work into it. And uh, what's great about it is we have some great partners who took the lead at Hennepin County. And uh, we're going to go back to the legislature, and hopefully this year they'll let Hennepin County take the lead on the project. Uh, the, the There's beauty. a drive to left center field. Torrey Hunter chasing it. Nice Whoa. running. <laughs> Backhanded catch. Two away. Torrey tracked it down in the gap in right center field. Racky set down seven men in a row. Torrey Hunter getting a great jump on that ball like he has, you know, for the past two, three years, running that ball down and robbing Ray Durham of a, for sure, double, possibly a triple right there. Two down, Scott Hatterberg, the hitter, and Mayor, continue your thought. Well, uh, so so we've uh, we've got I think all the infrastructure in place and ready to go, and hopefully the legislature will let us. And I think more than anything, the fans want to get back to real life baseball without all the politics. The contractions out of the way for a while. The, the strike thing is out of the way for a while. I hope this month is one kind of no politics and sports month, where people just get back to the fact that we're in a stretch drive with a team that everybody wrote off except those of us who are big fans, and uh, we have a big reason to celebrate. So I, I hope this month. We can remember why we love baseball again, not why we love reading about strikes and contraction and all that. And I think that'll make uh, getting all this done a whole lot easier when the dust settles. 1-0 to Hatterberg. He's got a couple of hits and now a chopper up the line. It's a fair ball. And Hatterberg will be tagged out without leaving the box. Mayor, can you stay with us oh. another half inning? A 1-2-3 inning for Brad Racky is second in a row. The Twins tried to break Oakland's record-setting streak of 20 wins in a row. Dick Bramer, Terry Steinbach, joined by the mayor of Minneapolis, R.T. Ryback, with A.J. Pierzynski in the box, ready to lead things off against Corey Lytle. So you can really feel Radke starting to settle in, can't you? Mm -hmm. Once he gets past those first couple innings, if he gets through them, he gets into a groove, and you can tell it's starting to come now, which is good. A.J. grounded out to first baseman Scott Hatterberg, his first time up. Eight men in a row set down by Radke now with a 2 nothing lead. And Pierzynski takes ball two. Again, patience from a hitter who's not known for his patience. Exactly. Uh, you know, the A's, I mean, the uh, Twins have studied this guy. You know, they went out to Oakland and, and didn't have the bats that they're capable of having. And, you know, they, they went to school. And it's paying off tonight. Base hit to left. Pierzynski aboard with a leadoff hit. It's the third leadoff hit for the Twins. They've all come in odd-numbered innings, and they've all led to a run. Mayor, the Twins did get a stadium bill passed last year that seemed to favor St. Paul because it excluded Hennepin County. Right. Now, in the next legislative session, do you have to start from ground zero, or can you build from that, amend it one way or the other, or put a couple of amendments to it, to allow Minneapolis and Hennepin County back in the game. I, I, I think that's that's the way to go. A lot of good work's been done. I don't think people have to start from zero. Mike Opat, uh, uh, chair of the county board, has been such a great leader on this, and, uh, and he's going to lead the charge on that. And I uh, I clearly think there's a lot of good work done. You know, the, uh, the stadium commission did some real good work. They had a report that didn't wind up reflected much at all in the final bill. And uh, there were some good things in that report, too. So I think a lot of a lot of good things can come forward. But... but uh, but as I say, I, I think right now we're in a period where people um, are falling in love again with the Twins and baseball. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit like, 
when you're never sure what's going to happen around the corner, it's tough to fall in love. But once uh, the commitment's made, <laughs> and that's what I guess I see that that, uh, that new contract is. Well, I think as evident is our nice uh, nice crowd tonight. Oh, you it's know, a 30, great. 30 plus thousand people here. It's great. And, and, and the fans in here, I mean, they're cheering every pitch. They're waving the Homer Hankies. And it's it's feeling like uh, feeling like playoff time to me. Another throw to first. You offered, I thought, a nice touch to the Twins' drive to stay in Minneapolis. You've got some bells pealing the Twins' theme song yeah. every night before a home game. Uh, yeah, noon every day before the uh, before the game, we play "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" from the City Hall uh, spire, which, which which is a great one, and it's part of our safe at home committee. Uh, you know, we really believe the Twins are safe at home, and and uh, and I think we're showing it tonight and so many other nights. And I, I just hope people come in and and uh, pack this building and really make it rock. Hit and run, Hatterberg picks up the ground ball and will beat Rivas to the bag. Rivas nearly hit a textbook single behind the runner, one away. You know, we travel around there and, and we see the benefits that, that ballparks have uh, for cities and, and what it's done to generate and maintain interest. When you look at this Twins lineup, Jock Jones, Louis Rivas, Chris John Guzman, certainly Torrey Hunter. These are all players that the fans have connected to. And the fact of the matter is a new stadium will have to be in place if these players are to finish their careers or have the opportunity to finish their careers with the Twins. Well, and I think that's doable. I think also, though, it's one of those things where uh, it's a chicken and egg thing, that we also have to figure out a way to make sure that the nucleus of this good team stays here. You know, the, the values that a team like this teaches uh, team like the team I coach, you know, as they watch it, these aren't players who seem to be just playing for the money or not. They seem to love the game. They gel together as a team. And uh, I, I just think this, 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 this version of the Minnesota Twins, and I've seen them all since 1960, this version is one of my very favorites because they, uh, they really are a team. And that's what I teach my Little League team, and I hope they learned a little bit of that this year. Third time through the order, the team's hitting better against Lytle, and Jones starts that third trip through the lineup with this at bat and Pierzynski at second base one out up around the hands one and one that's a tough pitch to hit that Jones started the game for the twins with a double to left center scored the first run of the game one and one to Jock Jones And it's one and two. You've got the site you would like picked out for the stadium. I know that there's some problems. This is a personal preference. I always like the site that the Guthrie ended up getting, but they've had problems over there. Is there any way of rewinding the tape and putting the ballpark over where the Guthrie is supposed to be? Well, you know, the thing that's uh, that's good about the site that we have in the warehouse district is, um, is that the, the parking is there. The freeway is there. The light rail is going to come in there. Hopefully, this North Star rail line is going to come in there. People can get there in a lot of ways. But more important, it um, it'll be many millions of dollars cheaper than building it anywhere else because all that's in place. You know, one of the the top things about this discussion about the Viking Stadium uh, is it's in a place being proposed where there's no infrastructure. So right. that's tens of millions of dollars. It's tough enough to build the ballpark with all the, all the other stuff. I think right now people, especially when government is as strapped as it is, and people are as strapped as they are, they want a good value. So uh, I, I think that's one of the things I like about that side. Bounce to the right side. Ellis over to Hatterberg. Pierzynski moved up another base, two away. It's also, uh, I, I think, pretty exciting to think about putting it right in the middle of the entertainment district. Uh, where, you know, where we already have some great, great places uh, at night to go for bars and restaurants. Hard Rock Cafe is about to open there. We've got movie theaters, all that in Block E, just a couple blocks away. And, you know, I think we learned a lot from, with uh, Metrodome. It's, uh, it's, it, it's nice to put a ballpark here where there's not a lot around it, but it doesn't generate an entertainment district in itself. Right. What you need to have is you need to have some existing entertainment, and then the ballpark makes it better. And so that's what I think is so exciting about that site over in the warehouse district. We've, we've got some great things already there, and it'll just uh, make it better. Here's Guzman at the plate with Pierzynski at third and two away. He takes an off-speed pitch for strike one. There's been so many nights, and I know the weather hasn't been ideal, but there's been so many nights this year where the fans have been asked to come inside when the weather is beautiful, like it was at least when I walked in here. And 
as many fans are here tonight, you'd like to believe there'd be another five or 10,000 that would show up to watch outdoor baseball. There's no doubt to me that people want to watch this game outdoors. And uh, as, as fun as it is uh, in here, and certainly it's given us an advantage in a couple of these series, that's well, nice. but, uh, but I think year in and year out, people, people love the idea of being outside. And you know, one of the things that's so exciting is that uh, some of this new technology has made it uh, draining these fields quicker. So even if it rains, uh, the field drains. One of the toughest things is um, is the cold. So we were looking at the idea of whether the energy recovery center over there can be used to help heat seats. Kind of an experimental thing we're looking at, but it would sure heated make it seats. Work. I like that. Well, it's, it's an interesting. <laughs> at idea. least in the press box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, only if you wrote a good story that day. We'll turn, it, turn it on and off. <laughs> One and two, Lionel wants a different baseball. Didn't Candlestick do that? Boy, if, if they didn't, they should have. They should have. <laughs> can't, oh, my. That was. Yeah, you, Terry, you sure know. We spent 10 years out there. We played a lot of games. And, yeah. uh, I mean, you could go there in, in the daytime, and you got to right. have jackets and, and sleeves and everything. And the way that wind blew, it was, that was a tough, that was, I mean, yeah. it was a whole field advantage for them, but a really tough place to play in. Yeah, we're cold in Minnesota, but it's good, honest cold. <laughs> One and two. Guzman, but ain't past the pitcher. Throwing out Guzman and keeping the Twins off the board in the fifth. Mayor, thank you very much. Anything we can do to help, let us know. Great to be here. Just come to the games and spend some money downtown when you're there. So. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mayor. Bye-bye. Minnesota Twins baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by All-American Recreation. All we sell is fun. And by Chrysler. See your local Chrysler dealer. Pardon me, Bert, from Sioux Falls. Let me do this. Go ahead. Well, you can have this well, one. he's gone. <laughs> Let me do that. Uh, All right. Very nice. I don't get a chance to do that very often. Sioux Falls is represented tonight. And Brad Radke will face the three, four, and five hitters for Oakland here in the sixth inning. And a strike on the inside corner. Before we get too far along here tonight, I know you'd like to join me in congratulating Wayne Terwilliger, who is ending 55 years of work in professional baseball with his uh, final game as uh, a coach for the St. Paul Saints. Twink, a longtime first base coach here. Not, a, not too fond of that strike two call, but. Twig, one of the great gentlemen I've ever met in this game, and it, the, the only sad part, we wish him well in his retirement, but he's going to be retiring in Texas and not in the Twin Cities. He's going to Texas, and uh, you know they, they they did a nice feature on him, you know, with his last game with the, with the Saints, and there was uh, sounded like the door was left open for uh, Twig to stay involved in baseball down in Texas. It didn't seem like he was just going to completely get away from the game. So, as you mentioned, I do wish him well and. Uh, you know, Texas is really, really picking up a nice acquisition for for their baseball programs in that state. Two strikes to Tejada. Tejada singled in the third. The A's have four hits. They got two in the first, didn't score. Two in the third, didn't score. Check swing, and it's one and two. I noticed about Brad in tonight's game and. And I think it's just part of, of, of him getting some more innings in. But keep an eye on his velocities. He's been more consistently around the, the 89 to 90, 91 mark. Hits the bag. And that'll save the Twins a base. It's a leadoff single. But it would have been a leadoff double had it not hit the bag. Here's our FoxSports.com email question. It involves uh, the Twins' longest winning streak. Mark Berglund from Roseville, our carsoup.com email question, wondering about the longest Twins' winning streak, and it came in their last championship season of 1991. 15 games in a row, including a 10 0 homestand, finally ended by the Orioles at Memorial Stadium in 1991. Eric Chavez with a single and two trips. Get a streak like that, even 10 games. 
And I don't know whether you were a part of any streaks like that with Oakland, but boy, you just get a, almost a feeling of invincibility, don't you? Once it gets to 10 games, what it must be like to be out there playing with a 20-game winning streak? Here's a pop-up to Rivas. And that's the first down. Well, you talk about that confidence, Bert. I mean, Dick, uh, it, it, it means so much, you know, when, when the team steps on the field and, and it, in their minds, they know, you know, that they're going to win. And especially at this part of the season, you know, you go into, uh, uh, you know, you go into play Texas or you go into play Cleveland or, or, you know, you go into play Kansas City. It's, it's such an advantage. I mean, these teams literally almost know they're beat, you know, before the game even starts. And the reason they do that is, is, because of some of these streaks, you know, because of uh, winning the series is three out of four, three out of four, three out of four, it, uh, you know, kind of sends the message throughout the league that, hey, when you play this team, it, you know, it's going to be a tough game and you're probably going to lose. But well, that's what to me makes the wins 18, 19 and 20 so remarkable for the A's. If ever there was a game to lose, it probably was Sunday's game against the Twins. Three home runs hit by the Twins at the top of the ninth to take the lead. And then the A's get a three run home run by Tejada. Bouncer to third. Kosky to second. Rebound to first double play. A beautiful round the horn double play. Rivas finishing it off to Mitkevich and Randy faces just three in the inning. You're watching Twins Baseball on Fox Sports Net, your home for the Twins. Two to nothing, Twins. Time now for our nightly reading of the disclaimer. Tonight's presenter, New Alm native Terry Steinbach. Thank you. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Okay, now in German. <laughs> Only my grandma could do that. <laughs> Koski with a pair of hits tonight and a foul on the first pitch from Corey Lytle. Corey driving in a run with a double in the first inning and then singling with two out in the third. One and one. It'll be Koski, Ortiz, and Hunter as the Twins now in their half of the sixth will send up the three, four, and five hitters. Half swing. Did he go? Yes. One and two. Ooh, I don't know. I think I'll take a no swing on that one. One and two. And now two and two. Koski driving in his 60th run of the year. Finish strongly this year and carry over a hot streak into the postseason. Dipping away three and two. And Corey, those expectations, he had such a good year last year. You know, had his 100 RBIs and, and uh, you know, offensively was it was a nice kind of breakthrough year for him. And I think sometimes, you know, puts a little pressure on, on, on players because you want to get out to such a good start. You want to try to duplicate those numbers. And, you know, I think when, when Corey relaxes and just concentrates on the ball, he ends up hitting it very well. Pop up down the line and out of play. Still three and two. The A's the pace to win 103 ball games. Last year they won 102 and finished 14 games out. Lifted foul and out of play. Still three and two. Been an incredible run for Oakland. If they do win 103 games, it would continue a pattern that has seen their win total increase every year over the last six. Another 3 2 from Corey to Corey to center and deep. Going back as long. Get out your home. Three for three and 
the Twins lead three to nothing. What a great at bat right here for Corey. You go back and look, not so much at the home run pitch, which he hit very, very well right here, but he kept his at bat alive by the two previous pitches, following off some tough pitches. Here he takes that pitch again, drives it to the deepest part of the ballpark for, for a home run. Gives the Twins a nice 3-0 three, three lead here on top of the sixth inning. And now David Ortiz. Swing and a miss. Twins leadoff hitters have hit for the cycle against Lytle here tonight. A leadoff double in the first, a leadoff triple in the third, a leadoff single in the fifth, and now a leadoff home run. One strike to David Ortiz. Oakland knows that as well as they have played, they're facing the toughest part of their schedule starting tonight. The next 14 games are against teams with winning records, eight of those, as we said before, against their closest pursuer and the second hottest team in the American League, the Anaheim Angels. That's a pretty amazing thing. You know, you play this long in the season, this hard. And basically, like we talked earlier, their 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 season, you know, it's in it's in their hands, but it's going to come down to that last month, that last month of the season. You would think, wouldn't you, that if you were a pretty good ball club to begin with, and at this stage in the season, if you'd run off 20 wins in a row, you would bury everybody in your division. But it hasn't happened because the American League West is baseball's best division. Ortiz swings and misses for the first out of the six. You might be seeing double Sunday night at the Dome, Twins Day. 2002 means families with multiples get great ticket discounts and they're invited to join in a Twins pregame parade. Call 833 Twins for details and tickets for Twins Day. And remember, game time on Sunday has been changed to 7 o'clock. Twins getting more and more national attention and a national telecast to wrap up this series Sunday night, which is less of a concern for the twins that I know that for the A's who have to leave here after the game and fly to Anaheim and open up a series a big one against the Angels who will play a Sunday afternoon game instead of a Sunday night game. One and one to Hunter. Those are tough flights to overcome right there. Torrey looking for his first hit tonight. Change up, popped up behind the plate. Hernandez back. And he has no play. One and two. Teams on the West Coast, of course, are used to playing each other out there, but even going out there can be tough. I mean, the Twins have done okay out on the West Coast this year. The team that has really struggled. The White Sox, they're 3 and 25 the last two years going out to the West Coast, and they've lost their last nine at the Coliseum against Oakland. The short left, Justice has a long run, and he is there for out number two. Let's go back to the last big series played here between these two teams 10 years ago. Game one of a three-game series against the Oakland A's. And who is that slim young man hitting that three-run homer? Boy, that seems like a long time ago there, Dick. <laughs> that was the opening game, and that was the big hit in Oakland's win in the first game of that series. Eric Fox hit that memorable home run to win game two, and then the A's completed the sweep the next day. I think that was good to see about that where that ball went is very similar to what we have out here full sands. Yeah. Uh, you know you hear that the excitement that that the dome can create in here. I mean it it it, it wears on you you know in the field when you're out there and you're used to communicating just calling balls who's got it I got it whatever and when you get you, you know the 30 plus thousand in here I mean it gets to the point where where you know it's it's a definite distraction out there. One and oh to Minkiewicz. Now a strike. Remember that series? It seemed to be the pivotal point in that 92 season, both for the Oakland and 
uh, for the Twins. Well, I know we were coming in here, and, and it, was, it was important for us because we wanted to separate ourselves from you guys. You, you know, 91, you had just won it. You got a lot of the same players back. Uh, uh, you know, but the potential to, to, to do it again is there. And, uh, uh, you know, we were out of it in, 90, in, in uh, 91, so we, we wanted to kind of redeem ourselves. And, and also, it was uh, a point of the A's career. It was the last hurrah for us because yeah. we knew after 92 that that team was going to get this dismantled so it was, it was it was obviously a very big series for us and, and at that time you know worked to our advantage one and two to Minkiewicz deep to right center field long chasing this one the other way he's under it for the catch Minkiewicz just missed a home run Koski started the inning with a home run and the Twins lead grows to three to nothing Welcome back to the Metrodome. Three nothing twins. I'm Clay Matvick. Time now for our Pella windows. Look around the league. Anaheim leading Baltimore 6 3 in the eighth inning. Anaheim three out in the American League West coming into tonight. The Indians leading the White Sox 7 4 in the seventh. The Twins' magic number would drop down to eight if the scores hold up tonight. The Mariners 12 4 over the Royals. That is in the sixth inning. Seattle. Four out in the wild card coming into tonight's action. We go to the seventh. Again, here's Dick and Terry. Twins leading three to nothing, and now David Justice on the first pitch. A swing and a miss. Justice in an early key at bat came up with the bases loaded and two out in the first. Radke coaxed a pop up to Koski near the mound, and that was the best threat. Here's a liner to McCavitt. Down. One away as Justice is robbed of a hit by Minkiewicz. That's that's why they call him Gold Gloves right here. Nice play, Doug in a great ready position. Sees that ball all the way off the bat, and you know makes a nice play to start the inning here. And again, uh, you know, typical of of, of the, the the history of the uh, trade of the of the Twins. It's that awesome defense you know that, that that they've always had even in some of the thin years you know when when they weren't winning the one thing that you could expect is is, is good solid defense there's Mark Ellis deep down the left field line but it's going to hook foul one strike well all this talk about the Oakland A's let's not lose sight of the fact that Brad Radke tonight is trying for his 100th career win and Radke of course, getting all those wins, all 99 of them with the Minnesota Twins, his career mark coming into the game tonight, 99 and 99. Kosky, the McCavich, two away. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, the Indians battle the White Sox or Lance Berkman and the Houston Astros take on Sean Green and the National League wild card leading Dodgers in a crucial game between two playoff contenders. It all begins this weekend. Check your local listings for the start time in your area. Two down. Brad Radke's faced the minimum over the last four and a third innings. Did give up a leadoff hit in the sixth. Got a double play later in the inning. And now Terrence Long taking ball one. Dirt 2-0. Oh. We don't know, of course, what's going to happen, and it would be foolish, idiotic to assume that the A's wouldn't come back and win this game given their history. But let's imagine for a moment that Brad Radke continues to pitch well. And let's, regardless of whether he gets a complete game, regardless of whether he gets a shutout. 2-0 to oh, long. Chopper to third. Guzman runs up. Throw another one, two, three inning. A very good inning for Radke. Now for a sports update, let's go to our Fox Sports Net studio. They put everything together so far against this red hot baseball team. Some clutch hitting and some great pitching by their starter. Yes, they have. Let's start with the pitching first. Brad Radke, after the third inning, has faced the minimum amount of hitters possible. He's mixing his pitches up very, very well. He's uh, uh, here. We see Corey Koski. First inning going with the double uh, RBI double get getting the uh, uh, twins 
on the board right away in the first inning, uh, trying to set the present for the game. Here again, we'll stick with Corey, giving us a nice home run. He battled really well in that at bat, uh, fouled off some nice key pitches, and, uh, and, and drove the ball out. Now we get to Brad right here, doing a great job right there, pitching out of the jam, getting Eric Chavez to chase that nice changeup down and away. Meanwhile, Corey Lytle pitching awfully well for the A's again, not as well as Radke, obviously. He got Michael Kadire to bounce out on the first pitch. Kadire hustling down the line. Miguel Tejada's throw just barely getting him at first base. So one away quickly in the bottom of the seventh, and A.J. Pierzynski will hit. And a pitch just off the plate, ball one. Lytle part of what's been a remarkable success story in Oakland in the second half again this year. Oakland's record has just been phenomenal. The Twins are winning here tonight. We'll take a look at the Jeep game summary. Seven shutout innings so far for Brad Radke. Corey Koski with three hits, a triple away from the cycle. Change up and a swing and a miss, two and one. But over the last three years, since the All-Star break, the A's are 139 and 62, a winning percentage of 692. So it's not just this year. Here's Pierzynski driving one down the line. It's a fair ball. Pierzynski digging for two. He'll be in with a one-out double. Second hit tonight for Pierzynski. We're going to see A.J. take a break ball, doing what uh, uh, typically left-handers do with that down and in pitch. Just dropped the head, drove that ball right down the right field line, and got in for a nice, easy stand-up double. Well, it could have been a stand-up double. Could have been a stand-up double. I think he's just working on his practicing a slider. There right you there. go. Here's Louis Rivas. Ran a triple up the gap in left center field. Rick Peterson, the Oakland pitching coach, will come to the mound. The Twins know all too well the magic that the A's have had. They would like very much to add to this 3 0 lead. Been so much focus on the A's, and rightly so. And the presumption has been for the last week or so that the A's and Twins would meet in the playoffs. But if the scores hold up, Anaheim would be just two games behind Oakland and with all those games left to play Michael Bowie warming up in the open bullpen you can't discount the fact that Anaheim might be the division winner exactly I think everybody's getting caught up you know in in, in the 20 game streak which which is a remarkable record you know don't, don't want to take anything away from that but as far as the standings go here Oakland's got they they got a long road ahead of them yet. You know, Anaheim is battling. You know, they haven't been in postseason play in a while. They want to get back in there. I wouldn't even rule out Seattle yet. You know, Seattle's right there, and you know, obviously Oakland. And those three teams are going to play each other pretty extensively this you know the last part of the season, and it'll be very interesting to to see what what the end results of of, of, of those battles uh, bring out. One strike to Rivas. Oh, Pierzynski nearly picked off Ellis a little late going to the bag. And while the A's and Angels will be playing each other, the Mariners will be playing the Rangers. Now, bloated payroll and all, the Rangers are still the worst team in the division. And they're going through a rebuilding process with a lot of younger players. So the Mariners, even though they've struggled over the last few weeks, are in position if Oakland and Anaheim as they say beat up each other Mariners with a good little winning streak could climb right back in the race Rivas shows bunt takes ball one think that you got to be careful about Texas you know a bunch of September call ups you got some positions that are available for for some of the younger players and those younger players are going to be hungry to take advantage of that playing opportunity that they had and I think Texas potentially you know could give Seattle you know a lot of trouble oh, sure. just just because of that. One and one to Rivas. And now two and one. 
for a while. The Twins some had, had some activity in the bullpen. I believe it was Tony Fiore who was warming up. But now they've shut down the bullpen. The way Brad Radke's pitching, they may let it ride tonight. I think finishing that inning, Brad sitting at uh, 88 pitches. So, I mean, pitch count is, is, is fine for him. Two and one to Rivas. Off speed pitch, tapped foul. After the sweep at the hands of the A's, and again, the Twins played pretty well, could have won any or all of those three games. The Twins played pretty good baseball up in Seattle. Winning the final game of that series. The Twins have won the season series with the Mariners. And they won the season series with the Angels as well. Still have a chance to do that with Oakland. They need to sweep the series to do it. Bounced foul. Twins ended up five and four against Anaheim, five and four against Seattle. And a win tonight, if they can finish it off, would bring their mark against Oakland to three and four. I think you look back at that road trip, and uh, you know it might seem kind of kind of trivial, but I think that last game you know, that they played in Seattle, you know, to get that win, you know, they go ahead and at least salvage one win on the road trip, have a nice off day, you know, yesterday, and then come into this game, you know, fresh, you know, and ready to go. Two and two to Rivas. Hold foul. And Al Newman skips out of the way of that one. Lytle has pitched well. It's a quality start. Three earned runs over six innings with 100 pitches. Just seven hits allowed, no walks. Approach Terry talked about the Twins having tonight a more patient approach, not intended to draw a lot of walks, just to get better hitting counts, get deeper into the count, as Rivas has done in this at bat. Tapper to third, Chavez, and Hatterberg, two away with Pierzynski for the time being stuck at second. As America marks the anniversary of the September 11th tragedies, the Twins would be honored if you'd spend the day watching the national pastime before Wednesday's game with the Tigers. There'll be a very special tribute to the victims and the heroes of 9-11. That tribute will begin at 11.30 on the field, first pitch at 12.15. If you'd like more details, call 833-TWINS. I'll be privileged to be a part of that ceremony down on the field. Here's Jacques Jones, a double to start the game, and a run scored. Up and in, ball one. Got a chance to hit 300. He's got a chance to hit 30 home runs. He's got a chance to score 100 runs. What a year it's been for Jacques Jones. One and one. The thing that I was really impressed about Jacques talking to him in spring training this year is, you know, what he did this offseason. Wasn't happy with his season last year. You know, he knew that uh, improvements had to be made and. Uh, what he did is, is, you know, he took it upon himself to to work, especially offensively, you know, on a swing. Contracted the uh, the, the the help of uh, you know future Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn, and uh, uh, you know him and Tony worked out pretty extensively this offseason, and it's really nice, you know, for, for an ex-player and I probably for anybody to, to see someone, you know, when they they, they dedicate themselves when, when they work really hard on something and to see it pay off here and 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 see Jock put up the numbers that he's doing. You know, it, it, it just to me is just a great story, great, great feeling inside. And there have been so many times this year where he's done exactly what he did here tonight provide a little life or juice at the top of the lineup for the Twins, that leadoff double, scoring eventually the game's first run, may have set the tone for the whole night. Hayes left the bases full in the first, the Twins came back and scored one on a pair of doubles. Inside, and it's two and two. What a job he's done. 
getting the Twins through a few rough spots along the way. Everyone, I think Terry would agree with you. That win in Seattle was an awfully big win for the ball club Wednesday night at Safeco Field. Trying to make it two in a row with a win here tonight. Foul to the screen. I noticed about Guardian. Obviously, you've been around him, you know, a lot more than me. And uh, remember him as a coach. You know, his personality, his attitude, you know, his his demeanor. And the thing that I'm really impressed about now he's the manager. All right. And I come here today, and his personality, his demeanor, his his uh, his uh, uh, fun-loving attitude is still there. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you'll see guys that'll kind of, oh, okay, I'm a manager now. I gotta I gotta act this way, or or you know, there, there's certain right. protocol or etiquette that I gotta do. Guardy, on the other hand, seems to be really loose. Re seems really to be able to uh, communicate well with his players. Really kind of keeps them keeps them having fun. You know, and that's really what this game is about. There have been times when he's had to lay down the law, and he's done that. Two and two to Jacques Jones. Foul back. This has all the makings of Koski's at bat in the sixth inning. You know, a long battle here. Jacques has fouled off some two strike pitches. All right before Corey throws this pitch, are you making the call? I mean, is this a call, Dick? Huh? Jacques Jones is going to get a hit here. It'll be good. Two outs. AJ should be able to score. Two and two again to Jones. Three and two. If he reaches, Guzman will hit here in the seventh inning. are playing their final game tonight without Jim Messier, their valuable right-handed setup man. He's pitching the, or serving the last game of his three-game suspension. But the way the A's have gotten innings from their starting pitchers, you could take half the bullpen and sit them out. Nobody would notice. 3-2 to Jones and the chopper to the left side. Tejada's going to have to hurry. And a nice dig at first. Hanover drops the ball. Now Kierzynski scores! Jones and an awfully big fourth run for Minnesota. The outcome turn here you see Miguel trying to make a quick throw. He has to with the speed of Guzzi or a jock. Hatterberg drops the ball. You almost saw another base running blunder right here. You see AJ getting under the tag right there. Definitely safe, but prior to that, AJ kind of had stopped. You know, that's like a cardinal sin. Once you round that base, once Newman gives you that sign to go, you got to keep running. You got to keep going and stop once the play is over. AJ shut it down a little bit early, almost cost him a run. A big two out single, an infield hit, and an RBI for Jacques Jones. Game trailing four to nothing. He doesn't know what to do with himself in the dugout coming out of the game behind. And a Menards pitching change brings hard throwing left hander Micah Bowie into the ball game. Bowie's done a nice job for the A's since being called up. The A's with a couple of harder throwing left handers than what we saw back in July. They had Mike McNante and the Mike Benefro, but now Ricardo Rincon and this guy both bring it a lot harder. I think that's part of why you're seeing the success that, that the A's have had. Uh, you know, you can get your starter. Granted, the A's have good starting pitching, but you know, every now and then they're going to falter. And when you can go to, you know, a very strong bullpen like they have, it's going to take you on those borderline games, take you over the hump, and give you the opportunity to win some of these games. Guzman, the hitter. Bowie throwing over, thinking that Jones might be going on the first pitch. Guzman drove in a run with a ground out in the third, nearly delivered a bump single to drive in a run in the fifth. Great play by Mark Ellis to rob him of a hit and a run batted in. Back in the fifth inning. Up and away, ball one. Away over the 
Oakland dugout, and it's one and one. Twins with eight hits on the night. A couple of doubles led to a run in the first. A couple of singles led to a run in the, or a couple of hits in the third led to a run. Koski's home run in the sixth and a pair of hits here in the seventh have produced the fourth run of the night. High and tight. And it's two and one. Racky with the jacket on will be given every opportunity it would appear to complete his complete game or shut out. Two and two to Guzman. This is where it gets a little tricky right here. You know, you ran it. I'm sure Brad wants the runs. You know, the run support is great, but he's been sitting in that dugout for quite a while as well, and you just hope that uh, you know, the edge that he had, that, that, that he doesn't lose that edge. First checking Jock Jones, who's stolen six bases this year and 12 tries. What we've seen so far is not a good move by Michael Bowie, but maybe all these are decoys. Nor have we seen real live fastball that we were told Bowie has so a lot of off speed stuff up there breaking ball misses and that runs the count full with Koski on deck Like most teams typically have made their first bullpen move, a left-handed move. Runner goes deep drive to left field. Going back is Justice off the wall. Jones off with the pitch. Rounding third. He's coming home. Tejada's throw to the plate. He stays at the plate. Jones scores, and it's five to nothing. A 3 2 2 out double by Guzman, and the Twins lead 5 to nothing. Here you see Guzman having a nice at bat, getting that fastball up out over the plate, thinking it might be out there. David Justice, being the veteran player that he is, couldn't play that ball any better off the wall right there. Jock Jones rounded the bases, ran the bases very nice, and again slid under the tag of. Uh, of Ramon Hernandez for, for the fifth run of the game. Somewhere there, although it wasn't in any of our replay angles, Corey Koski must have done a nice job motioning to Jock Jones where to slide. The throw was on the foul side of home plate or on the baseline. And the on deck hitter, the next hitter, is supposed to indicate to the oncoming runner which way to slide right exactly because the throw is up the line a little bit up up the third base line just a little bit and that opened up the you see Kosky coming into play right here telling him to slide down and here Jones is going to the inside part of home plate and that's what what made him safe on that play two runs for the twins here in the seventh Kosky at the plate now with one strike he needs a triple to complete the cycle situation right there that always makes you wonder a little bit. You know, Koski having a great night, three for three, home run, single, double. You got first base open right here. You know, and you go, well, you know, is that intentional? Is that trying to send a message? Is that, you know, you just never know. Well, you're a catcher. How many times did you <laughs> give the sign to hit this guy? What happened on the field stays on the field, right? <laughs> I might have been known once or twice to, to have to protect 
protect our, our, our hitters, and uh, we might have to uh, throw oh, one inside a little bit. It sounds so valiant, like it's the <laughs> honorable thing to do. No, I honestly think it's part of the game. Uh, you know, you got to do it. You know, you have to have to let uh, uh, everybody know what's going on out there. And uh, you know, in that situation, first base open keeps the force. Uh, you know, Cosby's having a hot night tonight. Uh, you know, David uh, uh, not swinging the bat real well so far. You know, I think they're going to take their chances of that. Twins are prolonging matters here in the bottom of the seventh. It's been a very long inning with just two runs having scored. Mike Fury warming up in the open pen. But with every run the Twins score, whatever the margin for error was for Brad Ratke gets pushed out a little bit farther. And Ortiz strikes out to end the inning, but the Twins get a couple of runs on three hits, and they leave two. It's five to nothing. Running out of time. Go ahead. Here we go. Let's button. circle it. I'm not first, but it's still your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy 11th birthday. Five to nothing. The Twins have the lead. And former twin Greg Myers gets an at bat here, hitting for Ramon Hernandez. Hernandez had gone over two with a couple of ground balls to Rivas. All right, got to ask you, what's your theory on this? Do you think that the uh, Greg Myers obviously caught Brad Ratke? Do you yeah. think he has the advantage, or is it the disadvantage? You know, because he gets up there, what's he going to throw me? Thinking too much? Is it going to change him? Is it going to be a fastball? He's got that backdoor curve. Now he's throwing a little cut fastball inside. Well, you tell me, how many former pitchers did you hit against? Well, I'm asking you, you first. I got I, my feeling. I, <laughs> I would think it would be a great help for a hitter having caught. A pitcher as Greg Myers has Brad Ratchy. Down the line, sounded like a broken bat. One and two. It can be an advantage for for the obvious reason, you know, because uh, you know he caught and he kind of know what his tendencies might be. But the thing that people don't realize it is still a different angle, you know, because when you're catching both eyes looking forward, you know, you're, you're squared up. When you hit, you're almost on the sideways, yeah. and you know you're kind of tracking that ball a little differently. The other way it can be a disadvantage if you know how crazy the pitcher is out there. <laughs> you know, one of our guys just got hit. You're the next guy up. You know that pitcher doesn't hesitate to do it. You all of a sudden you get these thoughts starts going through your mind. Two and two to Myers. Radke has been brilliant tonight. And a strikeout for the opening out of the eighth inning. This ball gets your NFL fix a day earlier with the most outrageous, unpredictable NFL pregame show you've ever seen. The NFL show on Fox Sports Net with Michael Irvin, Tony Siragusa, and comedian Tommy Davidson. Start your NFL weekend the night before kickoff with the NFL show, premiering tomorrow at 12.30 on Fox Sports Net. Here's Ray Durham against Randy. A slow breaking ball that clips the outside corner. Durham 0 for 3. Hayes had a chance in the first inning. They loaded the bases with two out. Radke got out of that. There's a little weak ground ball to Guzman. Minkiewicz two away. Great series between Oakland and Minnesota for some of the glory years. Terry, you remember this play at all? <laughs> Very vividly. <laughs> I think my leg still hurts from that play. <laughs> That's a good example, though, of some of the rivalry. You know, we talked earlier in the show about, you know, two teams that are playing hard, clean baseball. Some people might look at that and say, oh, that, you know, that wasn't a clean hit. That was, you know, it was a dirty hit. But the particulars of that of that game is uh, 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 twins were down by one run. Puckett scores. They tie the game. You know, well, my side, I can't let them score. You know, we're up by one. So. I mean, those are many memories of, of some hard fought battles that, that these two teams have had. How many times will you see in this day and age a marquee player like Kirby Puckett, you know, barrel into a catcher like that? That's part of the game, I think, that, that, that is starting to change. And, uh, you know, whether it's the contracts, whether it's durability, uh, you know, even some of the franchises, though, you know, your, your, your general managers and managers, they, they don't want to take the risk or the chance of, of having a. Uh, Alex 
Rodriguez, you yeah. know, out, out for two, three weeks. Uh, you know, in a normal situation, that could determine whether you make make it or, or, or don't make the playoffs. So. Two and one to Hanneberg with two gone in the eighth. Down the line, twisting foul. There's any loss that grew on Brad Radke during that long bottom of the seventh. You'd be hard pressed to tell it based on what's happened here in the eighth. He struck out the pinch hitter, got the leadoff hitter on a ground ball, and now it's two and two to Hatterberg. Breaking ball got him. Eight shutout innings for Brad Radke. You're watching Twins Baseball on Fox Sports Net, your home for the Twins. Minnesota Twins Baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Car Soup, where you can sell your vehicle for only $25. And by Dodge, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. The streak is not over yet, but the Twins are leading five to nothing. <laughs> And we have a new Oakland pitcher. Thankfully, he's fully clothed. Mike Fury coming into his 14th ball game for the A's. The A's, like uh, everybody else in baseball, the opportunity now in September to call up some other relief pitchers. Yet Fury has pitched 42 and a third innings for the A's this year. And he'll face Torrey Hunter, Doug Minkiewicz, and Michael Kadire here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Anaheim has already won. So the A's three game lead might be in danger of being trimmed by a full game. Fury with a high fastball, ball one. Greg Meyer stays in the game. He'll do the catching in place of Ramon Hernandez. Foul back as Torrey got another pitch. Up in the strike zone. I got to put a plug in for Greg. It's always good to see, you know, a, a nice person, you yeah. know, have a nice career like he's having. You know, uh, uh, it was really a neat situation. You know, when I joined the Twins here in uh, in uh, uh, '97. Uh, you know, he was the catcher here, and it could have been, you know, it could could have been kind of hard. But when I mean, he was, he was really nice. He, he helped me out with some of the pitchers that that, that the Twins had, and uh, you know, he moved on the year after, and and he's put together a really nice career, and and. And he's got some really big hits for Oakland this year. He was caught in a pretty awful situation last year early in the season with Baltimore. Wasn't getting a, a chance to play at all. Orioles seem to be in chaos in a lot of positions, including behind the plate. One and two to Torrey. Driven foul. And so he's gotten kind of a reprieve in Oakland, and he's not playing every day. He's a backup, but he's part of a awfully good ball club, as we said, who for the second year in a row might win 100 ball games. I think that's so nice about his character is there's not many players out there that could have tolerated the situation in Baltimore that Greg went through without you know verbally lashing somebody you know or or you know the situation here where where uh, you know he might think he needs more playing time and the thing that Greg does is you know he just goes about his business. Uh, great guy in the clubhouse uh, you know, great teammate to have and and uh, you know a guy that that I really enjoyed having on my ball club for a year. at 267 for the twins in 1997 286 the year before that two and two Hunter Seattle should win its game they're leading Kansas City 12 5 and the eighth that's driven foul. Twins hoping to reduce the magic number tonight to eight. Cleveland's in the ninth inning with a lead over the White Sox. Those folks who had uh, that magic number sign up there since day one this year. Three and two. Over 27,000 to paid attendance tonight. 
Franklin's expect a huge crowd tomorrow with the bobblehead giveaway. Chris John Guzman bobblehead. Deep to center field. Off the fence, Hunter will dig for second. And he's in with a leadoff double. The Twins have mashed the ball here tonight. A lot of doubles could have been home runs with a little more loft, including this one. I don't think you're going to see a ball hit much harder than Torrey hit that ball right there. He hit that ball right on the line. Uh, line drive all the way in the air right off the deepest part of the park again to center field off the baggie for a double. Well, the Twins with 10 hits, a home run, a triple, six doubles. I beg your pardon, five doubles. And here's Mitkevich. Doug 0 for 3 on the night, a strikeout, a ground ball, and a fly ball, taking strike one. That's the situation here. Uh, you know, I know they got a five run lead, but you know, with a club like Oakland and their ability to come back, what Doug really should be trying to do right here is keep up that fundamental baseball. You know, try to hit that ball to the, to the right side of the field so that Torrey can advance to third and they can get a shot at driving him in from third with less than two. Fouled away, 0 and 2. Kyle Mikavich, as he has so often this year, providing our key defensive play, our Chrysler play of the game. You see Doug McCavich doing what he does best. You know, that gold glove, great defense, reading that ball right off the bat and not being afraid to use that body catching that ball. At the time, it was just a 3 0 twins lead, and his snaring of a justice line drive kept the A's from threatening in the seventh. The pop up behind third. Tejada calls for it. And has it for the first time. Monday night, the Twins host the Tigers, and it's another Christopher and Banks women and baseball night. The first 5,000 female fans, 18 and older, get women and baseball lunch bags. Discount tickets are available at Christopher and Banks, CJ Banks, and Broad Store. You can call 833 Twins for details. Here's Michael Kadire with one out in the eighth. Kadir with a strikeout, fly ball, and ground out so far tonight. Ball one. You asked me earlier about Kadir, his reaction to being called up right before the date when the playoff rosters have to be set. Showed up in Oakland with a big smile on his face. He's just a wonderful young man, and he's experiencing a lot of things here for the first time. Had a great year at AAA, and now he'll have a chance to contribute not in a pennant race, but beyond that in the playoffs. That's another example of uh, you know players trying to do you know the right thing. Spring training, Kadir has a, a, a really solid spring training. Doesn't make the club out of spring training. All right. Again, you know, which which way are you going to go? Some players, you know, might be very boisterous about that, and and justly so. I mean, he had a tremendous spring training. Uh, instead, Mike went down, worked worked on on, uh, on what he wanted to work on, put together solid numbers in in, in, in AAA, and here I think is is what you're seeing the results of that. A guy who you know kept his nose clean. Hey, whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to keep playing and and, and kind of uh, force. The twins' hand to bring me up, you know, by putting up the numbers, by having a good attitude, by by going about my business properly, and and I think Mike was rewarded for that this year. Two and two. Three and two. With Kierzynski to follow. He was a part of an awfully good Edmonton ball club for the Minnesota Twins, a team that also had Rochester native Michael Restovich put up some very impressive numbers at AAA. The problem is Restovich, like Kadir now, an outfielder, and the Twins are awfully deep in outfielders right now. <laughs> so a foul back. 
And good outfielders put it at that. Really felt bad for the ball club, certainly to have lost Sunday afternoon, but really specifically for Kadir, who hit the third of three solo home runs on the top of the ninth last Sunday in Oakland. I mean, imagine what a thrill it would be to be called up and in the same series after you're called up, knowing you're on the playoff roster, you hit what would have turned out to be a game winning home run ending a long winning streak for the opposition. Here's a bouncer to short. Tejada has it. He'll throw to first. Atterberg stretching to make the catch and Hunter advancing to third two away. It's kind of neat to see some of the experiences that you know the kids out there. I don't call them kids because they're they're young. You know, some of the experiences that they get to see their first year. You know, postseason play, you know, the way it's looking right now. The guy are getting called up, you know, home run, uh, possibly, uh, 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 you know, game winning home run, and, and, and all that at, you know, such a young age and, and, and happening so early for these guys is you know, really neat. It's really going to build character for these guys in the future as well. A.J. Pierzynski at the plate with Hunter at third. He's got a couple of big two out hits in the seventh to score a couple of runs, looking for another one here in the eighth. Up and away, ball one. This would appear to be the first game of the seven between these two teams where the closer for the leading team in the ninth inning hasn't been asked to get a save. That's how here's ball getting away from the catcher. Myers and Hunter will score. Six to nothing. And the Twins take advantage of a leadoff hit, a leadoff extra base hit, to score a run in the eighth. Do you see that slider being thrown down in the dirt? And uh, uh, Greg kind of made that cardinal sin, you know, the catcher, you got to get down. And uh, you know, he kind of tried to pick that ball. And what it did, bounced off his glove, ended up rolling just far enough away to give Philly a chance to score. Now 2 and 0 to Pierzynski. 2 and 1. The chant swelling from, I believe, first left field, now sweeping around the stadium. The streak is over. Well, I've seen too much of this <laughs> Oakland A streak to. Uh, Join in at this point. It ain't over till it's oh, over, right, Dick? Man. All the games that you've seen, I'm sure you've seen a lot. Now the chant is over with, but the fans are cheering the chant. Two and two to Pierzynski. Three and two. And if there's a little magic in these Homer hankies the fans were handed out tonight, that's just fine, too. First time the Twins have had the Homer hanky. Produced since 1991. A pretty good omen for the Twins over the years. The bouncer up the first base side foul. AJ with a good night at the plate. Two hits and a run scored. Trying to get his team off the field here in the bottom of the eighth. 3 2 to Pierzynski. Foul down by the twin bullpen. Billy Koch, the Oakland closer, will apparently get tonight off. A's have pitched him in five straight games. A's have had the same schedule as the Twins with two off days this week. And this one stays fair. Hatterberg scoops it up, runs to the bag, and hangs over. But another leadoff extra base hit. Six to nothing, Twins. Brad Ratke will have a chance to complete the shutout. Well, we got these two young men right here, and we're going to have to circle them just for principle right there because I couldn't agree with them anymore. You're officially circled. And the Twins are three outs away from ending the longest winning streak in American League history. Oh, Bert, where art thou? 
Here's Minnesota wondering. Well, Burt's in Florida, perhaps watching tonight. Meanwhile, Brad Radke is three outs away from his 100th career win. And he's thrown 100 pitches tonight. And so far, he has been awesome. Trying to pick up his seventh career shutout, his second complete game win of the year. Ball one. Got a little challenge here, going right through the heart of Oakland's lineup. Three, four, five. <laughs> Tejada with a pair of singles leading off the night. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Now they're starting a Radke chant. Just think what this must mean for Brad. As these starting pitchers are kind of jockeying for position to pitch in the playoffs. The way Rick Reed has pitched has put him in the minds of a lot of people as the number one starter for the Twins come October. And here's Brad Radke who's toiled through all the losing seasons. You think he doesn't want to start that first game? Absolutely. I mean, this is what Brad's been here for. I mean, he went through some of the uh, thinner times, you know, with the, with the Twins, and to get a chance to get into that postseason, this is what it's all about. You know, that that's that's what he's put all that time, effort, and and, and work into is to get that opportunity to do it. So you know he wants it, and you know, what a better way to, to to show his manager, you know, hey, I want a spot, I'm ready for a spot, and, and look, this is what I can do. Two and two to Tejada. Just off the corner. Rackney's walked just one man. It was Jermaine Dye back in the first inning. The A's have not had a base runner since Tejada's leadoff single in the sixth. They obviously haven't scored. They haven't left a base runner aboard since the third. High pop up short left. Guzman out. Jones in. And it's Guzman in front of Jones for out number one. They never make these plays easy. Jock got a bad jump on that ball. He just didn't see it, and he tried to recover for himself right there. That's a play, in my opinion, when, when you see a guy camped under. Granted, that's a center, I mean, that's a left fielder's ball right there, without a question. But because of the bad jump that Jock got, and you see your shortstop camped under, you got to just stay away. <laughs> Let the guy catch the ball, and you make the adjustment on the next hitter. One down here, Chavez. Ball one. Man on a mission tonight. The focus of the baseball world on this game here tonight. To end the streak. To gain some revenge after being swept in Oakland last weekend. To pick up career win number 100. Oh, and by the way, if you can shut them out while you're doing it. What a night so far for Brad Radke. One and one to Chavez. Chavez could have swung twice at that pitch. Brad's trademark pitch right here, changeup, and you can tell by Chavez's swing how far out in front of that he was. You know, Brad has always done well with that pitch. His, his, his body motion, his, his arm delivery, the, the, the speed that he throws it are, are, are just perfect, and he gets so many hitters out front. To right field. Kadair can't make the play. He'll play it off the wall. Chavez digging for second. And he's in with a one out double. First Oakland hit since Tejada's single in the sixth. Again, you see Brad getting that ball just up a little bit. Just the ball was above Kai high. And, and Chavez uh, uh, waited back on that one very nice and drove it out to right field. So he's at second with one out and Jermaine die coming to the plate again Anaheim has won Seattle's probably going to win it's 14 to 5 the Mariners in front of the Royals. So the A's not only are in danger of having their record setting streak in it they're about to lose a game to their two pursuers in their division die takes a strike.
Ty bounced into a big double play back on the sixth. Popped up. It's a foul ball near the Oakland dugout. Pierzynski has ruled out number two. And these fans who weren't sure they were ever going to see Major League Baseball again have been treated to a wonderful ball game. Exactly. What a game for them to come back to. First game of a homestand, and we have offense, home runs, we got defense, Minkiewicz, we got double plays, and obviously we got pitching. Brad Ratke, one out away, one pitch away from having a uh, shutout here and, and ending open 20-game streak. Cleveland has just beaten Chicago 9 to 7. The magic number is 9. One more out. We'll drop it to 8. Little pop fly. Minkiewicz calls it, makes the catch. The streak is over. Brian Radke with a shutout for career win number 100. What a great game by Brad tonight. Can't do anything more than what he did right there. His concentration, his focus, pitch count, he kept it down. Kept a very powerful open lineup off balance and, and, and comes up with his 100th career win and a career and, and a shutout. What a perfect night for Mr. Radke. An awfully big game for Brad Radke. He's our All-American Recreation Player of the Game. And staking claim, I think, to the fact that he still is the ace of this staff. I think so. When you see the performance that he gave tonight, uh, pitched out of some jams early in the game and, and made pitches when he had to and, and, and just, just did a fabulous job and, and really kind of set the tone, I think, for this homestand and for the remainder of the two games. In a sense, his most frustrating year because he's missed so much of it. But the Twins and Oakland's 20-game win streak, more from the Dome in a moment. Is over a great streak, but it's all done with now as the Twins win here tonight. The Twins return to Fox Sports Net Monday night. The Tigers and Ernie Harwell making his final trip to the Dome and Minnesota. Coverage starts at 6:30. The best damn sports show period continues tonight at 11 right here on Fox Sports Net. Remember the Grand Casino postgame show is next for Terry Steinbach. I'm Dick Bramer. So long for just a little while from the Metrodome.